Today is an awesome day. We will be talking about how to welcome and connect with our spirit guides. This is a topic that I've actually wanted to talk about for a long time, so I'm very, very glad we're doing it. Please bear with me. Uh, today I have a bit of a throat issue going on. I've been going through a major detox cleanse the past couple days, and I'm just like um, not my normal self right now. So um, please bear with me. My voice sounds a little bit odd, um, but hopefully, God willing, my voice will um, be okay enough to do this, this conversation today. So for those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Anya Light, and I'm an intuitive life coach and a Reiki and meditation teacher. And my highest, highest joy in life is to facilitate discussions and meetings and gatherings of people where we basically can dive deep together and explore spiritual topics, spirituality, spiritual practice. So my joy right now is to just be here, present with you, connect with your energy, and see whatever comes up. So if at any point in this conversation you have a comment or question, please post it here on the Facebook um, page, and I'll get to it a little bit later. Cool. I hope this is an interactive discussion. So, okay, any discussion of this nature has to start at the very beginning of what is a spirit guide? What is it? What is it? So, a spirit guide, to put it very, very basically and simply, is a helper, is a being who their sole purpose and mission is to assist you and others as well. Basically to assist anyone and everyone who asks of their support. That's it. That's it. They do not have like other hobbies or desires that they want to fulfill. They're not like you and I where we have like competing attractions in our life like Yes, I would love to help that person, but I would also like to go have an ice cream cone. Okay, spirit guides are not like that. They don't, they aren't egotistical in nature. They aren't selfish in nature. So their purpose and mission 100% of the time is to be there for us. Because they quite simply have dedicated themselves to us. So when we talk about spirit guides, immediately what, you know, I think about is a sense of gratitude that this, these beings exist. So these beings are beings without form, without body, hence the name spirit guides. <clears throat> so these are beings who don't look like you and I, they don't have, you know, this lovely thing going on here um, they are formless they and if they're not sometimes they might assume a certain form for a, a specific period of time um, but ultimately they are without form they've transcended form they live in other dimensions and realms so that's the basic breakdown of what a spirit guide is in a nutshell we could probably talk about that for another 10 years um, just different definitions, but that's my quick down and dirty uh, definition of what a spirit guide is. So, you know, even though this topic might seem super fantastical or weird or mystical to certain people, if you think about it, there are a couple different types uh, of spirit guides that are ubiquitous across many, many cultures across the world. And maybe people don't label them as a spirit guide, but that's what they are. And the two things that I'm thinking of, the two for the um, types of spirit guides that are so common 
our ancestors. So relatives that are in our genetic family history that have passed on, that have died, that have gone to the other side, and that assist us now from the other side. So they may visit us in dreams, or we can suddenly feel their presence around us. And that's a very common thing across cultures and religions. Um, you know, even if you talk to very strict religious people who are um, very firm in their faith or beliefs, uh, you know, maybe if you use the term spirit guide, they might not understand what you're talking about, or maybe even get a bit hostile about it. But if you just talk about, um, being protected or watched over by their loved ones who have passed on, that's an extremely common and um, seems like universally human understanding that that happens. And then the other type that is like very, very common uh, across cultures, religions, spiritual traditions is angels. Angels. Angels are such a common, common being that, I mean, you, you, you can't walk into a room and say the word angel and people wouldn't know what you're talking about. Angels are <coughs> these benevolent beings of light who their entire mission and purpose is to assist us in our evolution and our progress and our growth. They're here, they're here to help us when times are tough. We pray to them. We speak to them. We ask for their guidance. We lay in bed crying and we just say, Archangel Michael, please help me. You know, we get, uh, we have to do a public speaking thing. We have to speak in front of people so we know, ah, I call on Archangel Gabrielle. She is the archangel of speech and communication. So all the different angels have their different jobs and their different tasks. And so many of us are familiar with angels as a form of a spirit guide. So basically, these two different um, angels and uh, relatives that have passed over, our ancestors, are very common, very common. So, you know, when you're talking about spirit guides with others, you know, there's so many different ways of putting this. And today I want to just um, stretch the conversation out a little bit more past those very common ways of understanding it and to say a spirit guide is anything that you resonate with that uplifts your energy gives you hope, gives you a sense of peace, gives you a sense of safety. And I don't mean that in a sense of safety as in everything's always going to be okay, but safety as in you know you're being watched over and guided and that even if something difficult or challenging or shitty happens that it is for the ultimate highest good and that there are beings around you who are assisting you to help you kind of learn the lessons that you need to learn at this stage in your journey. So a spirit guide could be so many different things. It could be a favorite animal that you resonate with. Um, for me, whenever I see squirrels um, anywhere and everywhere, I stop and I just like say prayers to them, I talk to them, um, and that, you know, even though squirrels do have physical bodies uh, in that sense, but the energy of the squirrel, it, it is with me and it informs who I am. Um, squirrel energy, my spirit guides of the squirrels, they bring me this wisdom of being playful in the midst of work. So like squirrels, you know, typically are always like working. They're finding their nut or uh, they're just like busy, 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 busy. 
but they're always keeping this like sense of playfulness. So I really resonate with those spirit guides. Other spirit guides could be um, ascended masters or saints that are, and some are still in the body and some maybe have left the body. Um, and the reason that this conversation is so perfectly timed is that I have entered the atmosphere of um, a saint who is no longer in the body. Um, and actually, I will just keep the name to myself for now because this is still a relatively new um, encounter and meeting and it feels really sacred and special. Um, I'm sure I'll talk about it in a future video or conversation or class, but um, this is a saint that, well, technically, actually, he's an, known as an avatar, so um, a being, a kind of being that only incarnates every couple thousand years to, um, to really assist the awakening of humanity on a very, very large scale very large scale. So I've come into this energy and I can hear this avatar's voice in my head. And since coming into um, relationship with this avatar, I have already experienced a number of miracles in my life. One that happened just about four days ago that my mind is still reeling because it's so incredible and so life-changing. Uh, it was one of those situations where I was on the, br you know when you're on the brink of like, okay, your life can go this way or this way, and it's very dramatic. I was at that brink, and this miracle happened, and completely changed the course of my life so dramatically. And so... Yes, so this, this avatar is greatly influencing my life. So other spirit guides that you could contact with, um, these could be um, fairies. This could be different kinds of creatures that you hear about in uh, what people think of as fantasy or science fiction, but that do have a basis in reality. So I love this topic because it really, really starts to push at the boundaries of what people think is real, what people think is acceptable or sane even. But I cannot stress enough that a spirit guide is there for you. A spirit guide is there to help you. You have this being in your corner. You have this being right now. I know there's a plethora of spirit guides around me right now who are helping me not cough my lungs out <laughs> because I've had such bad coughing the past few days. And right now, my voice actually sounds pretty good, pretty good. And I know that's because I'm here giving this message out, acting as a channel. And that work is work that they are assisting with. That's their business. So the business of spirituality, the business of healing, the business of awakening, that's what the spirit guides are here for. Spirit guides can also be uh, teachers who are, yeah, they can still be living for sure and we can tap into their energy. Often they're no longer in the body and they can be um, lineage, founders of certain lineages. So a spirit guide for me is Mikau Usui, who is the founder of Reiki. And so I've had many wonderful mystical experiences with Mikao Usui, one being um, when I first learned Reiki. It was maybe a few weeks after I received my first attunement in Reiki. I was 
giving myself a Reiki session and just like placing my hands on myself, sitting up actually on this very couch. And I had my eyes closed. And I just saw this vision of him coming from behind me and just wrapping his arms around me. And the vision came with this energy, this warm, so peaceful, joyful, compassionate, loving energy. And it just, it just brought me to tears. It was really amazing. <coughs> and that was the beginning of my real journey with him. I mean, I had read of Mihao Sui in books, and my teacher told me about him, of course. But the, the real beginning point was when he, his energy and I really interacted. So this brings me to how then does one welcome spirit guides into our life? How does that process begin? How does that happen? And so I would say the first step, if you will, is, well, it's already the, here, being here, listening to this, having this conversation right now. So check, you're good. The next one after this conversation is simple yet in some ways difficult. It is being open. Being open. Spirit guides are very mysterious. And it's not a logical process. It's not a rational or intellectual process. So we need to come at that, at this from the heart. From the intuition. So, how do we do that? We stay open and we have patience and we don't rush it. So, oftentimes, what has happened for me, and I've heard this from other people as well, spirit guides find us. Spirit guides choose us rather than we choose them. So let me say that again. Often spirit guides, they choose us rather than the other way around. So what I mean by that is this. You're living your life. You are doing your best to be a good person. You're on the spiritual path. You're living your truth, your authentic truth. You're growing more and more meditative as the days go by. And all of a sudden, in your life, you just hear of, let's say, a specific angel. And it keeps happening. For example, like everywhere you turn, you turn on YouTube, your friends, your family, a book falls off the shelf with the name of the angel in it. And we'll just say it's Archangel Michael. Everywhere you look, Archangel Michael. And you'd have to be a fool not to see this. Of course you see it. And it just keeps happening and happening and happening. Now, are you choosing Archangel Michael? Or is Archangel Michael choosing you? It really doesn't matter how you look at it, but Archangel Michael has come into your life. So that openness and receptivity will help the process. So be open and just be observant. <clears throat> be observant of the different names and energies and beings who are circulating into your world. Watch. You might think, oh, it'd be so great to have an archangel as a spirit guide. And yet what ends up showing up is squirrels. Squirrels just keep showing up in your world. 
A squirrel breaks into your house and you can't get it out. Your friend sends you a squirrel picture on Facebook and says, I just thought of you when I saw this. You end up seeing a squirrel documentary. Squirrels, squirrels, squirrels. What does this mean? So squirrels, while they might not be as like dramatically, seemingly amazing as Archangel Michael, might have a more relevant message for you at this time in your life. And see, that's the whole part of the whole game of this is spirit guides come and they go in our life. They usually come and go for a certain period of time. Now granted, some people can have them, you know, one spirit guide throughout their whole life, sure. But it's often the case that they come and go, just like our people friends, our human friends. So they come and assist us at a certain point in our life. And then when the lesson is learned or the wisdom is gained, they depart. So that step to recap is just be open, be observant, be aware. Okay, step two, once you have recognized and acknowledged that there's a specific particular spirit guide that you've begun contact with, communication, a friendship if you will, then <clears throat> it's as simple as talk to them. Talk to them all the time. I mean, not like 24-7, but consistently throughout your day. Talk to them. Talk to them as you would your friend. For me... This has become second nature. So when I receive a, an unexpected gift or a blessing or if something in my life is going so well, I often stop and thank the spirit guide that I'm feeling most connected to at the time. So I close my eyes and, I, and just in my mind I say, thank you, fill in the blank. Uh, Sana, I noticed her comment, does it have to be out loud? No, no. Um, talking to them can be all in your mind silent. Sometimes if you're doing a specific, um, like more formal ritual, speaking out loud can be very powerful. So I would recommend it from time to time, speaking out loud to that guide. But I would say, you know, it's really powerful if just throughout your day, you're basically keeping up this continued dialogue. What happens is when you are consistently communicating with your guide, you're speaking to them and you're listening for a response, every time interchange happens, it's just like a friendship with a human. That connection grows stronger, deeper, more powerful. In a sense, that spirit guide is more tuned into you and you're more tuned into them. They know you're paying attention, so they get louder. And sometimes when they speak to you, it might not be in like, a vo in, the voice in your head may not sound like a separate being. It might just sound like your own voice. So for me, when I speak to my different spirit guides, most of the time, it just sounds like what my voice sounds like in my head. But there's a different quality to it. There's a different resonance. And it's a bit difficult to explain, but the resonance is different than my own wisdom. So it's similar to how I'm giving this presentation right now. <coughs> I'm not in my run-of-the-mill state of consciousness right now. I'm more open because I'm working as a channel and more tuned in to the higher levels of wisdom. And so there's this different resonance that I carry. So when your spirit guide speaks to you, the words will carry a different resonance. And that resonance will generally feel 
like love, compassion, peace, joy, um, things of those that nature. If even if the guidance you receive is something that seems negative or um, challenging or hard or maybe something you don't necessarily want to hear, like it gives you a task that you really don't want to do, or it gives you some feedback about something you've kind of been uh, struggling with and they kind of scold you about something, even if it's that, there should not be a sense of fear in your heart when you hear it. So check with yourself. If there's a sense of of dread or fear, that's not your spirit guide. That is your ego playing a big trick on you. Okay? So even if, for example, your spirit guide says, here's an example, your spirit guide says, whoa, you're really uh, engaging in an addictive behavior right now. Okay? As you're eating like a piece of pizza or something. Okay? Because you know you don't want to be eating the pizza. You just made a choice or uh, rededicated yourself to eating 100% organic, uh, raw, vegan or something. And then you're eating this pizza from Pizza Hut. Okay? And you hear this voice say something like, that's not your highest good or what are you doing? You hear this voice, right? Even if it's um, coming as a critique or something difficult to look at, check within your heart. And everyone can do this. Everyone can do this. If you feel this voice carries with it a resonance of a sense of love, even if it's like a tough love, but a sense of love, you feel squared and centered within yourself with this voice, that's your spirit guide. That's absolutely your spirit guide. So talk to your spirit guide. Talk. All as much as you can, as much as you can. It's a beautiful process. And when you really start experiencing the miracles, and I do mean miracles that come into your life when you connect with beings that are of higher vibration, higher dimension, higher consciousness, life becomes a whole new ballgame. Your responsibility to others becomes stronger. You have more of an innate capacity for compassion within yourself. And you can see, you can see your own bullshit more easily. Because they're there by your side helping you. It's so incredible. Hmm. With my spirit guide. Um, my current one that I'm most connected to right now, I had, I had just the most amazing miracle happen the other day, and the, the, the gem of wisdom that he gave to me, um, it was a longer thing, so I won't say the whole thing, but at the very end, he said, nothing is real. And what he meant by that, and what I needed to hear at the time was that this physical reality, <coughs> which seems so solid, with a past and a future and a cause and effect and all that, totally mal malleable, totally magical. He said, nothing is real. And that, while in a little part of my ego, got a like, oh, a little like nervous about it, overall within me, there was this sense of, oh, such a release and a relief and joy. And I knew he was right. And that it's only my human conditioning that makes it appear as if I'm a limited being. And through his miracles, I've seen that anything really is possible. So, talk to your spirit guides. The final tip I'll give you in welcoming and connecting with your spirit guides is incorporate your spirit guide into your 
existing spiritual practice. So if you have a practice of meditation, for example, when you sit down to meditate, you can, before you meditate, just close your eyes and say a quick prayer of thanks to your spirit guide. Ask your spirit guide to be present during your meditation practice. Ask your spirit guide to help you um, correct any weaknesses or misunderstandings or ignorances within your spiritual practice. Just connect with your spirit guide at the beginning of the meditation. And then at the end of the meditation, connect with your spirit guide again. Say, thank you. Gratitude is good. Thank you, spirit guide, for being with me. I could feel your presence. I appreciate that you were there with me. I am so grateful. If your practice is yoga, you know, you unroll your yoga mat, you close your eyes, and you visualize your spirit guide. What does your spirit guide look like? You let that visual just flood your mind. Mm. And then you feel the energy of your spirit guide. You could even visualize that your spirit guide is taking your hand as you begin the poses. Whatever your, your spiritual practice is, connecting and integrating your spirit guide into your existing practices is a phenomenal way of welcoming that spirit guide into your life. Because the spirit guide, their whole purpose is spiritual awakening and healing. So it makes total sense that you would bring them into that spiritual practice because that is what they are. They are spirit. So I want to invite you, if you are on Facebook right now, I see there are some people here. If you're on Facebook right now, I would love for you to type in the comments, if you have a spirit guide, who is your spirit guide? And then just a quick little brief story of how you came into contact with that guide. How you met. How you fell in love. <laughs> and if you're on YouTube watching this later, I want you to please pause the video and in the comments section, tell us who your spirit guide is and tell us your love story, how you met. Okay, and while folks are doing that, I'm going to see if anyone has any questions. Um, and if you have a question and you haven't posted it here, please post. And or like just comments. I would love to look at those. So do you have questions or comments about Spirit Guide? Uh, Stacy, hey Stacy, thanks for asking a question. Stacy Marino says, <coughs> <clears throat> She says, <clears throat> do we just have one spirit guide assigned to us? Probably not, <laughs> um, unless you feel that that's your truth, which is entirely possible, but likely, no. Um, so basically, it's amazing. Um, so I'll tell you, in order to answer this question, Stacy, I'll kind of go back into the beginning of my Reiki journey, which explains this a little bit. Um, so in the very beginning of my Reiki training, one of the things that blew my mind was talking about spirit guides. And it was kind of cutting edge because I was reading a lot of books on Reiki at the time. And it was a lot of books on like traditional Japanese Reiki. And there wasn't anything about spirit guides. But then my teacher, Barb, the rebel as always, um, she incorporated lots of stuff in her courses about spirit guides. We did like a visualization meditation to like meet our Reiki spirit guides and we we had all kinds of discussions about about it and I loved it so much. And 
one of the things is while there was typically like a few um, guides who you could just call upon, so teachers in the Reiki lineage that were just automatically guides you could begin to work with simply because you're a Reiki practitioner, what really blew my mind is that there are beings in these dimensions of light and we can call them in the astral world we could say that those um it's the heavenly realms which is what the christians and many other religions are actually referring to when they talk about heaven um, there are these heavenly realms that these exist in the, what is known as the astral planes and these beings are incredibly benevolent and they are there is countless of them, and some of them are called to work with healers, specifically, and with other kinds of people, too. So basically, it's almost like, it's funny, it's like a, in a way, um, like humans. Like humans are called to have a certain career or a certain position, and then they just gravitate towards doing those kinds of things. Just because you don't have a body doesn't mean you're different. <laughs> so these angelic, heavenly beings of light who want nothing more than to guide and assist us, they, they gravitate towards certain kinds of people depending on who they are. So when I learned Reiki, I was told that there's Reiki guides and yes, there were specific names of certain ones I could begin to work with if I so choose, but that I, what was so mind-blowing is that there was basically this massive number, countless, you cannot count, number of Reiki guides who literally are like on call <laughs> to assist Reiki sessions and Reiki trainings and anything related to Reiki. So I just got into the habit of opening myself to those beings, even though I couldn't name them all or see them all or even like differentiate specific ones, um, I could. But generally, I just wanted to feel all of them. So I just started to open myself to them and just trust that whichever ones would come would come and help. So over time, I just trusted that the guides who were showing up when I was doing Reiki sessions were specifically attuned to helping me with those sessions. And interesting, um, one session, one Reiki session that I was doing, um, <laughs> I'll make a really long story kind of short. Um, I was working with a woman who had a lot of um, attachments that were specifically put into her from beings of a lower vibration. Um, they weren't nice. So, <clears throat> I mean, you could <coughs> kind of call it like an exorcism. I don't really use that term, but just to give you an idea of kind of what it is. Um, so I was working on helping those spirits just leave her. And um, a very, very, very in tune being showed up to the session with, my, with the client just showed up. So she, I'm not even entirely sure she was human, by the way, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> so she just showed up and she sat in the corner during the session because she said she just wanted to observe and to assist. And I just instantly trusted her, even though I never met her before or really knew anything about her, but I just instantly trusted her. Anyway, she sat in the corner and as I was calling in my Reiki guides, so my crew of Reiki, light bearing helper friends. I was calling them in. She was sitting in the corner and she goes, oh. and of course I looked at her and I was like, what? Because I normally don't have anyone else there in the session. So it was kind of a unique moment. I just said, what? And she said, you can't see them? I said, no. I said, actually, I typically don't have very good, um, like, third 
I or um, that's not my gift typically. So I said, what do you see? And she said, we'll just wait till the end so I can tell you later. So and at the end, she told me that she witnessed these huge, she called them angels, um, but she said they actually looked kind of different. They kind of looked like, um, they weren't entirely like white and shiny. They kind of were partially gray and really unique looking. And they were as tall as my ceiling in my home. And there was two on each side of my client laying on the table. And she said they're kind of actually funky looking. And it's probably good you can't see them because they're kind of weird looking. They might freak you out. And she went into great detail discussing what these beings looked like. And she said, I can tell they follow you and they help you with all your sessions. And I said, yeah, thank you so much for um, describing what they look like because I've always wondered. I can feel them. I can sense them, but I can't like. I've never really known what they look like. And my clients can sense them too because they can feel other hands. You know, I'll be doing a session and my clients will say, how come I feel 10 hands on me? And they'll like look around like, what the heck's going on? Um, you know, and I'll just, depending on their level of openness, I'll give them a response. Sometimes I just subtly say, it's just the magic of Reiki. You know, if I don't, if I feel that they're not totally ready to hear um, but if I do feel that they're ruddy, I'll just say, you know, I have formless beings who assist me. And I want to make this clear really quick here. They're not assisting me because I am so magical. I mean, yes, I'm magical. We're all magical. We're all great. But what I mean is anyone with a sincere desire to do work of awakening, of healing, of assisting others in their awakening and healing journeys. Beings want to help. Spirit guides want to help. So you can have exactly the same kinds of amazing experiences that I've had. I am not unique or special in any way, other than I've made the choice and commitment in my life to, as best I can, assist and guide others in their journey. So, Stacey, I kind of hope that answered your question. Um, you know, do we just have one spirit guide assigned to us? Um, we have many spirit guides, typically. Many, 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 many. And as I was saying with the Reiki, I have so many that I cannot even count. Uh, and sometimes in our life, we are called to work with one in particular more closely. Um, so, it all just, it's, it's amazing how it flows and, and works. Okay. Um, Sweet Thunder asked, what about ancestors from reincarnated lives? Do they follow us? Mm-hmm. Yes. Who we have in our ancestral lineage is extremely important to who we are in this lifetime. Now, some of us have had difficult relationships with our families from this lifetime or previous lifetimes, and there is a certain amount of karma that needs to be healed before those relationships can manifest as wholly positive and wholly invigorating and supportive. What I mean is sometimes we have some shadows that we need to work with. So spirit guides can sometimes start out as beings from this life who maybe have passed on or beings from previous lifetimes who maybe we had a somewhat difficult relationship with at a certain point and there's some karma that needs to be cleansed. But once that karma is cleansed, it's like the love just takes over. It just takes over 
And then that guide is wholly available to us as a spirit guide. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Let's see, does anyone else have any questions? Um, Stacy talked about a spirit guide coming to her in her dreams. So that's one of the most common ways for spirit guides to interact with us is through the dream state. The dream state is <clears throat> an extremely potent time for communication. And that's actually one of the major ways of how my journey started in interacting with spirit guides is through my dream state. Because in your dream state, you are the most receptive of all <laughs> okay you are let me let me just make something clear here dreams are real okay, let me say that again dreams are real what happens to us in the dream state is real our consciousness leaves our body, kind of like death in a way, leaves our body and travels to other dimensions where we are not limited by space or time. We can fly, we can do anything we want to do. It's real. And the wisdom that we gain through our dream state can be so potent for then our waking state. So people often dismiss dreams as like, oh, that wasn't real, that was just a dream, whatever. It's real. Nightmares are real. You're confronting, you're doing battle, you're cleansing, you're facing shit that's deeply held in your subconscious. That's real. You're healing. beautiful dreams, where you're enveloped by angels, that's real too. One of my favorite spirit guides from my whole life is Leonard Cohen. Hey, Leonard. Leonard Cohen and I, for some reason, our souls decided to be intertwined through many lifetimes. In this lifetime, he was a great singer poet, artist. His songs and music touched me like I can't even find words for. And when I was going through my healing crisis around um, 2013, 2014, I would sometimes listen to his songs all day and just lay on the carpet and weep. But a good kind of weep, you know, like a healing weep, a deep weep. And when he died, when he left the body, I felt it. And since he left the body, I've only had a few dreams with him. But the most recent was about, I don't know, three or four months ago. And it was so good to see him again. He used to be in my dreams all the time. We would make love, we would laugh, he would share secrets with me of the universe and I'd wake up in orgasmic bliss. Which brings me to a really important point. Spirit guides are another version of ourselves. So even though they are tuned in and tapped into a higher wisdom, they are though, at core, just another version of the one. We are all one. This crystal that I hold in my lap, this is me. This couch that I sit on, this is me. Each one of you watching, you're me and I'm you. And I don't mean that in like a sweet way. I mean it actually. We are all one. So your spirit guide 
is another version of you that you resonate with, you appreciate, you get excited about. They turn you on. They make you feel like, like they can help you see a different dimension of life. That's what their purpose is. So while we do, yes, bow to them and say thank you to them and we have gratefulness to them and we do revere and honor them, we also hold it lightly because we know that is just another version of us. In a sense, we created them. In a certain sense, Leonard Cohen and I were the same. And a part of me created him. And a part of him created me. And we came together. We're still together. He's not really gone. And you and I sitting here, I'm sitting here in this very hot apartment with sweat running down my legs. And maybe you're out there in a very cool house and you're chilly under the blankets. And we might seem so different and so far apart and so separate. We're one and the same being having different forms and different manifestations. So your spirit guide is another form of you, a different manifestation of you. So it's good to keep that in perspective, to remember that. It kind of takes them up off their pedestal and makes them what they really are, inspiration. Okay, my darling friends, I am utterly awed that my voice sounds so good because like I said, I've been coughing for the past couple days with this uh, detox that I've been going through. It's been quite hell, really. I uh, wasn't sure if I was going to make it through this conversation, but my spirit guides have helped my throat sound pretty good. So I appreciate that you're here. And um, if you would like to ask any more follow-up questions, and I didn't get to your question, go ahead and shoot me a direct message on Facebook and I'll get to your question as soon as I possibly can. And if you're watching this on YouTube later, I'd love to hear your feedback. I'd love to hear about your story with spirit guides and any questions that you might have about starting the journey or taking your journey to a deeper level. Maybe you've been working with spirit guides for a long time and you really, really are ready to go deeper. I can t let's talk about that too. All right. Blessings to each and every one of you. Namaste.